Mirsada Burić rođena je 8. aprila 1970. godine u Sarajevu. Tu je završila osnovnu školu, zatim prvu gimnaziju i upisala studij novinarstva i sociologije. Paralelno sa školovanjem bavila se atletikom koju je počela trenirati kada je imala 11 godina i bila je jedna od najtalentovanijih mladih atletičarki u Bosni i Hercegovini i Jugoslaviji uopšte. Bila je srednje progašica, a njeno vrijeme koje je istrčalo na mitingu u Kaliforniji 1995. godine i dan danas je zvanični rekord Bosne i Hercegovine u disciplini 5000 metara. U ranim 20. godinama njen život dobija neočekivan obrt i tu počinje zaplet filmske priče koja traje i dan danas. Mirsadu je početak agresije na Bosnu i Hercegovinu zatekao u porodičnoj kući na području Bojnika, odnosno Rajlovca u Sarajevu. Odlazak na treninge, trčanje i tartan stazu zamijenili su užas i rata. Zajedno sa 13 članova svoje porodice, Mirsada je početkom 1992. godine zatvorena u logoru u Rajlovcu, gdje je provela 13 dana uslovima nedostojnim za bilo kakvu vrstu boravka. Imala je tu sreću da napusti logor u Rajlovcu, a onda je ubrzo stigla vijest da će biti jedna od članica olimpijske delegacije Bosne i Hercegovine na ljetnim olimpijskim igrama u Barceloni koji su počinjale 25. jula te 1992. godine. Imala je manje od šest sedmica da se pripremi za igre, što je jednostavno premalo za bilo kojeg profesionalnog sportistu. Dužina priprema u stvari i nije bila najveći problem, jer sada je srednje progašica i morala je trčati po nekoliko kilometara kako bi bar približno simulirala ono što je očekuje u Barceloni. A kako trčati nekoliko kilometara u gradu na koji svaki dan padaju stotine granata i pucaju snajperi sa okolnih brda? Stadion Koševo nije bio opcija. Tu se probudio inat i prkos. Osluškivala je kada oslabi intenzitet padanja granata i izlazila na ulice da trči. Bio je to njen odgovor agresoru koji je okupirao njen grad. Njena slika kako trči pored izgorene olimpijske dvorane Zetra obišla je cijeli svijet i postala jedan od simbola otpora i života u Sarajevu u to doba. Samo pojavljivanje bosansko-hercegovačke delegacije tog ljeta u Barceloni i činjenica da se zastava te mlade novoformljene države zaviorila zajedno sa zastavama ostalih zemalja svijeta bila je svojevrsna pobjeda Bosne i Hercegovine. Nakon olimpijade vratila se u Sarajevo koje je opet napustila po završetku rata kada je otišla u Ameriku. Magistrirala je političko novinarstvo na prestižnom univerzitetu Kolumbija. Danas sa kćerkom i sinom živi u Kaliforniji i uspješna je poslovna žena koja više od deset godina radi u oblasti financija. Životna priča, dostojna knjige ili filma. You were the member of the Bosnian Olympic team, first Bosnian Olympic team back in 1992 in Barcelona. Uh, I suppose you are very proud because you are you were a member of, of that team. What what are your thoughts about that time? Uh, basically, your, your life changed in like few weeks. Well, I am uh, very, very proud that I was uh, a member of the first Bosnian uh, Olympic team, as well as um, that I had an opportunity to represent our country um, 28 years ago in those of first ever, uh, first Olympic Games. Um, for us, it was amazing just to be there, um, considering the situation um, in Sarajevo and Bosnia. And, um, you know, we really didn't know at the time. When we left Sarajevo, we didn't know whether we will make it alive to the Olympic Games, whether our plane will be shut from the air as we were flying up or taking off from the airport. Um, but um, we did, we did make it. And um, I am still emotional when I remember those days or a particular moment in Barcelona. Um, it was the opening ceremony and um, um, our 10 member team along, along with our delegation when we walked in Um, my friend and uh, an athlete, Zlatan Saracevic, he took that Bosnian flag with the um, lilies on it and he raised it up so high, I felt like it was up in the sky. And at that very moment, we got standing ovations from everyone 
in the stadium. Um, I just remember feeling very, very emotional, and very, very proud of us being there. One of your photos uh, basically was seen all over the world in all uh, newspapers and televisions. Uh, it was the photo uh, where you are running in front of the Olympic Hall, Zetra. The, what was the main motivation for you? Uh, how did you feel in those preparations for the Olympics? I have to say that before I started running through the streets of Sarajevo under sniper fire and um, um, various bombardments of the city, um, I spent a 13 days in concentration camp along with all of my members of the family. Um, we survived the ethnic cleansing of that was um, basically that happened at the end of May of 1992, and um, it happened in Voynik, Ahatovich and the Brochuch, which are several kilometers away from Sarajevo. Um, you all probably have heard about atrocities that have been committed in that particular town. I really did not know at the time whether I would live or die or what would happen to me or my family. Um, luckily, we were exchanged for 13, uh, for, for um, several sniper men, about um, 380 women and children were exchanged for about 38 um, sniper men that were caught from the buildings in Sarajevo. And while the rest um, of the men were taken in a different directions and all of them were killed pretty much in the bus that was um, bombed. And um, I think there were a few survivors who could, uh, who witnessed uh, that particular atrocity. So when I came in Sarajevo, I basically was a refugee in my own town. I went to school, my high school, um, Prva Gimnazia, I attended Prva Gimnazia prior to that, and I was a journalism student at the time at the university. So I felt like it was very awkward to be or feel like a refugee in a city that um, you spend most of your own life, but there was no way of going back. Um, once that area was ethnically cleansed, um, we could not go back. So learning that I was selected to uh, be on a Olympic team, um, I already was very much angry, very much uh, in a total kind of a disbelief that not only what I've survived, but what we've witnessed every single day in the city, that it was happening. So what kept me going was a, sort of like a anger in me that I needed to do something from my own country. I know I could not bear arms. That was not me. I was an athlete, but I knew that by going to the Olympics and by training and trying to keep in shape, that that would be another way of defending the independence of the newly formed country uh, that we were living in. So that's, that's pretty much was my drive. Um, um, and I went out every single day, regardless of what kind of conditions there were. Um, um, I would gauge by the bombardment, you know, I would know by that point when I can go out and when can I stay at home or when can I use the stairs in the tall buildings or the garage under the Holiday Inn in order to um, run or do strides or um, train, you know. I used a variety of things to be able to keep in shape, um, even though I knew that I have a very little time to prepare for the Olympics. Um, after my release from concentration camp, I only had about six weeks um, to prepare. 
Well, I spoke uh, with a lot of athletes in, in my journalist career, and many of them were on the uh, European Championships and on in the World Championship, but uh, all of them are telling me the, the, the same thing. Nothing can compare with the Olympics. That's, that's something completely different. Can you, can you tell me a few stories? How do you remember Barcelona? Do you, did you have a chance to meet some of the famous athletes, like maybe American? Uh, basketball dream team or do you have any I don't know memories back in those days sure um, obviously a goal of every athlete including myself was is to go to the Olympics I think that is the ultimate competition and um, you know just the fact that you were in the Olympics, it, uh, uh, it seems almost like a special class of people. <laughs> That's what I get from a lot of people who, even here, it, when I say I was in the Olympics, they are usually in awe. Um, it's like, really? You went to the Olympics? Um, so yes, I, I do feel that um, Olympics are a, a special kind of a competition and um, our participation in Barcelona, I would have to say, for me at least, it was something a little bit different than it would have been had I competed or came from a normal circumstance. You have to remember, I came from a war-torn country, war-torn city. I trained under the sniper fire. I trained under bombardment. We didn't have hardly any food. I did not have a massage therapist. I did not have any kind of special uh, treatment that you would expect that athletes would get going to the Olympics. So in that regard, we were uh, all different, at least myself. I was very different from um, many athletes that were competed in the Olympics. So, we could not even be compared with the dream team that you were earlier referring to um, because those athletes um, had a special accommodations and if, before coming to the Olympics and during the Olympics. But I have had an opportunity to meet a few of them, uh, inclu including Charles Barkley. Um, so, as I said, uh, my experience being in, in the Olympics, I felt like uh, totally out of place because one day I am running on the streets of the, on the empty streets of the city um, and I'm just hearing the gunfire and nothing else. There are no sound of people, no sound of birds. It's just a, 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 a you know, gunfire from the surrounding hills. And then suddenly, you walk into this beautiful, you know, city with so much history. Um, people are everywhere. Athletes are everywhere. Everybody's happy and smiling. And I felt totally out of place, even though I was very, very happy that we made it there. But my experience was very, very different. But how do you see your sport today? Are you interested at all? Are you watching uh, athletic? Uh, is the sport uh, part of your life now in these days or not? Well, I think even when you don't necessarily train as I used to train or if you don't compete, that Sports and being athlete is always part of your life. You know, it, it could be uh, simple things as eating habits. You know, you adapt those kinds of things when you are an athlete and that is going to follow you throughout your life. The other thing that follows you throughout your life is um, per perhaps perseverance, dedication, hard work all of those elements are needed and necessary to be able to succeed in life no matter what you do. Um, you start with that as an athlete and then you just maintain them. Um, I, I, I strongly believe that my um, 
athletic um, ethics that I have developed or at, uh, ethics like um, that help me not only um, earn degree in this country um, at the most prestigious university, but also um, find the jobs that I wanted to do. Um, you know, regardless of being, you know, from a foreign country and not speaking the language when I came to this country, um, I basically pushed me to accomplish all of those things, regardless what obstacles were on the way or regardless how hard it may have been. Had I not had that kind of um, um, work ethic ingrained in me already, I think that um, it would have been much more difficult to succeed in all areas that I have succeeded in this country, um, including, you know, um, personally and professionally. Uh, unfortunately, Bosnia did not won the Olympic medal yet. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, athletics is concerned, uh, we have a medal from the World Championship from uh, Amel Tuka, 800 meters. So, uh, how do you see Bosnian sport? Did you did you have a chance to watch uh, Amel, and what do you think about him? And what do you think about that fact that we don't have an Olympic medal yet? I think. Um... I have followed somewhat um, uh, track and field, um, um, and I obviously am very familiar about all of the successes that our um, Bosnian now legend Amal Tuka has, you know, um, achieved, um, including his silver and bronze medals on the World Championships. Um, you know, I'm, I cheered wholeheartedly. I think the whole world cheered for him and, and to get those two medals. I think in time, Bosnia will have a, an Olympic medal, whether that is uh, from Amel Tuka or whether that is from somebody else. We just have to be patient. Our country has been in a war. We have been literally obliterated. 28 years ago, all the infrastructure was destroyed. Hundreds, uh, I mean, thousands of people died. It takes a time to rebuild that. And I have to say, you know, looking what current athletes have, many, um, I think, facilities have been rebuilt. There are adequate running um, tracks um, available in many cities. You know, we just have to get a talent, and that talent needs to um, basically have that desire and work ethics like some of our generation had. And um, eventually, I think uh, we will get some of those medals that we are strongly desire of having, like neighboring countries, Serbia, Croatia, uh, Slovenia, and etc. But again, you know, considering what was happening in Bosnia for three and a half years, um, I'm not as surprised that we don't have um, Olympic medal yet. And I'm not surprised that my record on 5,000 meters has not been broken yet. It has been um, sitting um, for 25 years. This year, I actually said that 5,000 meter um, record in 1995 here in Walnut, California at a special meet. Um, you know, after leaving the country, um, I had everything that I needed in order to be very successful. And so um, I had a fin some financial support. I had, I was in college at the time. And through college, where mainly sport here in the United States is supported either through high school or through um, college activities. Unlike in Bosnia, where sport is pretty much supported through the clubs, that is a huge difference. So, um, again, uh, I think we have enough talents and um, those talents with the right guidance and right financial support 
um, will lead us to get, uh, you know, that first Olympic medal that everybody wants us to get. But it's not all in the, all in the gold medals. I think, you know, it takes a lot of hard work just to be in the Olympics, just to get there. You are a very small percentage of population who ever gonna get to be there. Just think about if it's a 14,000 athletes that participate in the Olympic games, we have 8 billion people on this planet. And so we should be proud of any athlete from Bosnia who is able to even achieve or fulfill the norms that are prescribed by the Olympic Committee in order to qualify for the Olympics. That, that is a success in itself. Your story is really, I said to you in a private conversation, like a movie story. First, the, the war, the, the concentration camp, the war, the Olympics. Uh, now the successful businesswoman in, in, in uh, some other things. Uh, did you ever, ever consider uh, writing that uh, on a paper? Did you ever, ever consider writing some kind of memoirs, uh, uh, writing some kind of book or maybe movie? Well, yes, I have. Um, but anytime I touch some of the topics, I um, feel that many wounds start opening up. Um, the experiences that I have lived uh, through and many thousands of people in Bosnia have lived through, um, it's hard even after 28 years to digest. Um, I feel like I have buried some of those feelings. What would be then uh, your advice to the young uh, people in, in Bosnia, to the young people in, in any sports and maybe even not in sports, in general, to the, to the young people? What does uh, one uh, person uh, need to have to, to uh, become uh, successful in their jobs? I would say never give up and don't doubt yourself. Even when you fail, pick up where you left it and try it again. I've done that many times and I think as a result, I have been very successful. But if you read um, any kind of stories about the most successful people in this world are not those that have not failed, but contrary are those who have failed many times to be able to accomplish what they have accomplished so regardless of circumstance um, regardless of many disappointments that people or athletes could experience in their life um, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel and i would say just go for it never give up and um, uh, you will be in some way rewarded in the end.